thanks for attending. Good morning, by the way. Um, I'm Brian Lau. I'm a product manager for Telnav. Um, to be honest, I'm actually, this is my first time to save the map. And I'm, I guess I'm a noob in uh, OpenStreetMap. Um, funny story, during my interview, I was asked what's OSM. And the best answer I could come up with was, uh, it's a Wikipedia version of, for maps. And I think I, hopefully I got the answer right. And that's why I'm here today. Um, so today I'm going to talk about improve OSM. But we also have another talk tomorrow um, because we're, we're doing we have two exciting things that we're, we're doing. Um, and for the next, for, for today's session and for tomorrow, we will go into a little bit of detail what it is. Um, hopefully, you will all uh, be familiar with it and have time to, to use it. Just a little bit about Telnav. Um, since 2014, we've done thousands of checks and uh, run and, and tests as well. And from that, we're able to add millions of roads and thousands of turn restrictions and do uh, corrections and normalizations. So here, we again, it's, uh, we've added millions of missing roads uh, just from Telnav's involvement with OSM. We've added thousands of turn restrictions. And we've, uh, we're able to uh, contact local uh, communities, the local cities, to collect uh, road data from them, from public public sources. And I've contacted personally myself uh, a dozen of them. And they're all actually very nice. If you go to a local city's uh, website, and they usually have a GIS uh, link. And if you want to ask for their permission, assuming they have uh, public data, such as uh, new roads are added in, in neighborhoods, they're usually very quick to reply. And they are very, uh, and they're 100% of the time, from my experience, they will allow you to Take the data and add it to OSM because they know, you know, they know that this is all going towards a good cause. It's adding to, to the community and it's making the map better. We've also uh, done boundary imports in Mexico uh, through use of Inegi. Um, so we plan to, we have plans to um, move forward with that and add more data as we progress forward. So we're always uh, at Tom now. We're always looking for new ways to. Um, Find, find new ways to add more uh, data to the OSM as much as we can. And what we found is we have a wealth of probe data um, through our Scout app and also through other sources where we're able to take the probe data. And what we can find out of that is the direction of the road that was traveled and, um, and the direction it's going as well. So the best way to uh, for me to explain how probe data is, it's more like a DNA. It tells a story of where the, the location was from the start to end of that trip. And it also includes data such as a lat long. Every time it drops a probe onto the, uh, when, when it's recorded, uh, the heading, and also the timestamp. So what can we do with that type of data? Um, so one example is uh, we've Last year, we were able to identify a few places in Texas where there's constantly highway improvements. They're adding multiple toll, toll booths, widening the lanes. And we were able to look at the probe data and see um, when we overlay the, the, the probe data onto the OSM map that there are some times where the purple dots are traveling on, on a road that's not, that does not exist in OSM today. And from that, we were able to identify all these locations. And we were able to go back and add and edit um, this lo uh, locations like this to m have it match reality. <laughs> so just to go back, you can see the original map. It's just like a very standard highway. Um, it's just a one single on-ramp and off-ramp, on-ramp and off-ramp. And once we were able to look at it again, take a closer look by contacting the DLT in Texas, um, and also through satellite images, we're able to see there's a lot more information there. And especially with Texas, um, we're able to find a lot of places that are like this. They're always, they're constantly adding new um, tow booths, and they're trying to improve their, their road network to make the flow of traffic much better. So what else can you do with uh, the probe data other than missing road? We found that we can also use the, use, use the data to identify the, the direction of traffic flow, whether the road is a one-way or not. 
and also to identify turn restrictions. So I will go into a little bit of um, how, how this works. But before I do, just to, um, we, we, we came up with this tool called Improve OSM, um, and we launched it back in November. And since then, we were able to add thousands of um, missing roads and direction of traffic flow, and also hundreds of turn restrictions. So you can see here, um, most of the, most of the additions are in the United States, and, um, but we do have pro data around the world. So um, it, it just add, it adds to the, to the total number that we have. For missing roads, uh, how does it work? It's similar to the example I just showed a few minutes ago, where we take the, the probe data, we lay it over our, the existing OSM map, and what we do is we extract the highway tags from it, and, and we take the entire trip of that probe data from the beginning, middle, and end. For the direction of traffic flow, we have an algorithm where we look for trips that are passed through at least 100 times and the segment is um, less than 20 meters. Um, this is a, a way for us to build confidence to show um, whether, the, whether the road is in fact a one way or not. Because if, if there's, it's only been traveled five times and their confidence level is a little bit lower. So our criteria is to have at least 100 times before we're confident that we should add this into improve OSM. And same with the missing roads, we extract all the highway tags and edges such as service roads, uh, private roads, and one-ways are filtered out. The lower level, lower roads and the one-ways are that we already know as a fact is a one-way are left out of this uh, algorithm. For turn, turn restrictions, we, we do the same thing. We, would, we take the probe data, we lay it over an intersection, and we look for the, the start segment and the end segment. And we look for the, the number of times uh, the probes are not traveling over to, to, a, to, a, to the side of the road. Uh, let's say we're at an intersection. We, have, we plop down hundreds of probe data onto the intersection. And you can see a lot of people are either going straight or going right. And very little to no uh, left turns. So with that, we're able to, um, with, with confidence, with a level of confidence, show uh, that this is probably, uh, there's probably a sign there that, that says there's no left turn there. So we have a, we calculate the level of confidence and then we generate side files and then we import it into Improve OSM. So, I'm talking, so now I've talked about how it works. Well, how does it, how does it look like? So if you go to improveosm.org, uh, this is the first thing you see. Um, there is a catch though, if you want to edit, you need to log in with your OSM account. Um, for those of you, I assume no one here does not have a OSM account. Um, you can still look around, you can browse around the site, but you cannot make any edits. And the heat map will show you where all these different locations are, um, where, where, there, where we've identified locations that are either missing a turn restriction, uh, a, a missing road, or, or a highway that needs to be validated. And uh, the site also has pair, uh, permit, permalinks. So if you, even if you're a guest, um, if you're not making edits, you can still zoom into a certain level, um, copy the link from the, the search bar, and you can paste it and share it with your friends. If maybe in a situation where you're not sure exactly if the intersection has a turn restriction or not, but you might know someone who, who might. So you can always uh, send a copy and paste that link over to them. So just to zoom in on the, the right side of the bar, um, it, this is more of a filter. Um, on the tile layer, the, the basic map is the OSM map. If you want to look at the satellite images, you can switch over to Esri. And you can also sort by the status of the type of roads that you, you want to look at. So the open ones are the ones that need to be validated, whereas the soft ones are the ones that are already resolved by the community. And invalid, I will go into in a little bit in a few slides. And you can also choose the type of edits that you want to make. So if you want to do a one-way, uh, you, you want to edit um, one-way roads, um, you can select uh, a list of three possible possibilities, either highly probable, um, most likely, and probable. 
So the probable ones are the ones that we are a little bit unsure of. So for those, it's a little bit more challenging and I, I believe local knowledge is useful in, this, in these type of situations. So you're able to select from these three or you can have everything checked. So here's a, a fairly obvious example of the on-ramp uh, for a miss for one way. So at this type, at, uh, in this image, it does not show a one-way uh, one direction. And so um, on the box on the left, uh, there's information about that segment. So that, so that on-ramp has been traveled on over 7,000 times with a confidence level of 99.9% .9 and also includes other information such as uh, where it's located, uh, the type of road it is, and the confidence level. So just looking at the, at the that map, you can tell that it's, it's obviously an on-ramp and there, the number of trips that drive on it gives you the confidence to know that it should be an on-ramp. So it should be a one-way direction on-ramp. And if you want to make the edit, um, you can choose by doing the edit in osm.org or through JAWSM. And once you make the edit, of course, you need to add a comment. It's very helpful and you can change the status from there. For the invalids, uh, one of the small side effects we have is that when, you, when we plot the probe data, there's often times where the driver will drive into parking lots. So we're, we're able to see uh, you know, certain places like this where there was a concert, concentrated level of probe data in parking lots that are not actual roads. So those can be um, kind of like sorted out by marking it as invalid just to sort it out. Um, and we can look at other places for for the, the true uh, missing roads. So my next slide, I have a quick video. Uh, there's no audio here, but it just uh, quickly shows um, how the edit is done. Um, so since we're in Seattle, we can zoom in to look for a, a one-way. So you can quickly zoom in, go to the arrow, switch over to the satellite image, and just click on it, and you can see the information on the left. So the next example is for the turn restrictions. Um, you can click on it and you can see the same information as well. Um, and you, by adding more information, you click on probable just to see the level of confidence. And for the last one is the missing roads. We have, a tiles, we have tiles that will show in certain areas with the probe data on it. So here you can see on the map that there's a road missing, but if you zoom in, you can see a concentrated level of probes on the map and when you switch over to satellite images, you can see that there is actually a road there. Um, so the user switched over to JAWSM and now they're just kind of like padding over just to see and validating all with the different uh, satellite images to confirm that, that there actually is a road there. And from there, you can go in and make the necessary edits. Well, um, there's often times where there's not enough of it, um, but it's more concentrated in some areas. It's, this is more of just to getting to identify a certain area. Just like the earlier side with the on-ramp, we were only identify, we're able to identify one part of it, but once you go in there, you can see that there's a lot of other roads that are missing from there. So again, uh, you add your comment, save it, and and then click solve, and that's it. So once you, um, so it should go live over on OSM shortly after that. So um, we're, we're, look, we're really excited about the next thing for Improve OSM. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to add Improve OSM to ID um, as a layer. So the, you can still go to improveosm.org now, or even when this launches, as a separate place to make your edits. But once this launches, um, you can make your edits directly from ID. So the, the, looks, the look will be a little bit different, but the, the core features and the, the core usability will still be the same. You can see uh, the, the circles on the map. Um, there all, there's three different colors to identify the three different types of uh, edits that you wanna make. Just to zoom in a little bit, you can see on the right side, there's a, a layer that you can 
toggle to check imp improve OSM. Once you check that, then you'll see all these circles that um, to identify all these locations that needs to be edited. And at a lower level, near Century Link, uh, just a short distance from here, there's a no left turn there. Um, so at this time, when I when I pulled this screenshot out, I didn't make the edit. Just it's still there now. Um, just as an example um, to show that you know there's we we there are still um, few places, especially in the downtown area, where there there still needs to be edits that are, that needs to be made. Um, and using a tool like Improve OSM will be able to identify things like this. So thanks, thanks for your time. Um, if you want to be up to date on Improve OSM, you can follow us on Twitter at Improve OSM. And um, make sure you stop by the booth. And tomorrow, I just want to make a quick plug for the presentation for Open Street View. Um, at tomorrow at 3, 3 p.m. at the Pickett building that where we were just at. And if you stop by our booth, we do have a uh, gift bags, as some of you may have seen. Um, I was there in the morning, and I was able to meet a lot of you. And it's, um, I, I'll be back there later again to say, say hi to you guys. And we also have a daily price drawing. So please stop by just to talk about um, if you have questions about Improve OSM or about Open Street View. Thank you. Well, um, th this is sure. The, the question was, how do you detect false positives? How, how do you iterate your own detection algorithms based on the false positives reported right. from, from that? Right. Right. So, so um, what we what we rely on the the number of times the the probe travels through that that type of road. So, so the 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 number of times the the probe travels through that that type of road. So, it's it's more obvious for the the one way direction or the missing roads, but for turn restrictions, it's a lot trickier. So we're, um, we have to adjust the algorithm to make sure that it's a little bit more sensitive to those kind of places, especially with turn restrictions, because just because no one is making a left turn, it could be because of a time restriction. So um, for those, um, local knowledge is, is really preferred. So it's, but, but we try to tweak the algorithm as much as we can just to make sure that we don't run into these false positives. Right. So in in that case, if we if we don't have that data, then we then it's not shown on a map. Um, these are only on places where we do have people drive on the on the roads. Um, so there are of, oftentimes there they are um, they somehow the user does drive on the restricted roads, um, but it's oftentimes not enough for us to really pick it up. Do you, do you have any idea what percent of your Mm -hmm. So where I live, where almost all the roads are tagged as a residential, if I change it to service, that prevents you from telling us as a That's correct, yes. So I'm changing the lots of parking lots of residential and service. Um, so hopefully it, it, is a, is it, it is a service road, right? So I mean, if it is, then for, for this tool, it will, it will drop it. Um, but if it's a residential road, then it will be picked up as, once a certain number of uh, trips have been driven past it. Is there a future plan to go wider and I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Hi. Um, is there a future plan to acquire and input data through vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure technologies, like connected ITS technologies? Yeah. At this time, uh, we don't have plans for that, but that's something we could look into. I think that's very useful. Uh, you mentioned the time restrictions thing. So you have the timestamps, and a lot of uh, turn restrictions and directionality restrictions are time restricted. Do you have any plans to take advantage of your timestamps and start detecting that uh, can, those kinds of conditions as well? Yeah. So, um, at Telnav last year, we were, we did send out a few vehicles in different cities, and we were able to. Um, 
extract these type of information with turn restrictions. Um, I, the tricky thing right now is that um, with OSM, we, we still don't know the, the proper way to tag time restriction. I mean, I, I looked on a wiki page and there's different methods that people have and we haven't really concluded on the, the correct one to really use. Um, but that is something that we would add in um, as an as a additional feature. Hi. Uh, have you considered using speed at all to try and infer maybe speed limits or something like that? Uh, for for this tool, no, um, because people can speed um, in residential areas or also on highways, so it's hard to tell. Um, and so we still, it, it's it's much better to really rely on ground truth in those situations. Um, instead of re relying on probe data, because we're we're afraid of the, of, I guess, a false pro positive that we can get from that. I was curious how, um, so like you're basically taking snapshots every so often. How frequent are those? Snapshots? It's about two seconds. Um, we will take another another location from that probe, so it's about a second or two. So, of course, the more concentrated, the better. If it's scattered within a m minute or two, it's pretty much useless, especially for turn restrictions. If you're in one, one spot and then the next minute, the next point is somewhere else at a cross street, it's really useless. We, we can't really, we don't know where they went prior to that. So, so you're buffering that app side and then shipping it eventually, or? Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, how much data do you need to be confident in a term restriction or passes through that intersection? We, we feel more uh, confident when it's in the 90% range. Um, again, the term restrictions is very tricky. Um, so it's, we want to be as confident as possible because if you just make a, if you're not confident and you say there's no left turn there when there really is in reality, that can really screw up routing. Um, so we, we are very sensitive to that. In the back. Uh, hi, how do you correct or I guess try and notice temporary road closures or changes. I'm thinking about maybe a construction that reroutes so that a one-way street might look bi-directional for a few months. Yeah, so um, the, for, for this probe data, we collected over a, a long period of time. Um, for, for road construction, we tend to look, if we identify um, for some reason on a major highway, you know, no one's traveling through it, um, then we would go to the local government website and see if they have a major construction. Usually they do have that posted on their website. Um, and from there, if they don't have a completion date, then I would personally contact them. And they're, again, they're always very quick to respond to let me know, um, you know when they expect to finish the update uh, with the road construction. So once, once it becomes available again, um, what we do is we go back and check it, or I'll contact them again. Is this officially open now? And if yes, then we'll make the edit to say that the road is now open. Uh, how precise is the data? Is it enough to get uh, multi lanes that come from your lanes on the highway that are up, or maybe number of exit lanes from the highway? Um, not with this tool. Um, so I think uh, for tomorrow's talk, the Open Street View, I think that's a better uh, a way of identifying the number of lanes. The, another way is just by identifying these type of roads and then switching over to the satellite view and zoom in and hopefully there's enough detail to see the number of lanes that are on there. 